Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Tune In Tuesday. For those of you that follow Beach Guardian closely, you'll know that for two weeks in January I had the absolute privilege of going on a field course to Kenya with my conservation science and policy course at the University of Exeter. Since returning home from Kenya, I decided to produce a mini-series for my weekly Tune In Tuesday blog, exploring some of the conservation issues that they're facing in Kenya, but also some of the innovative initiatives that they've implemented to tackle some of these issues. Well, today I'm going to bring you the third in the mini-series of Kenya, and today I'd like to talk about something that we have experienced ourselves over the last few days here in the UK. This is climate change and extreme weather events and somehow I've managed to find the only gap in the wind and the rain to film this video for you so I've decided to come and sit out in the sunshine in my garden. Hopefully it will last. So as I've explained previously in one of my videos, when we were visiting Kenya it was supposed to be the dry season. However, almost every single day it rained. So much so that there were some roads it wasn't even safe to drive on, bridges were collapsing, we were skating along the black silk mud in our safari buses through the national parks, and some of my course mates even had the opportunity to shower in the rain. So why is this? Is it climate change or is it just a one-off weather event? I'm sure most of us won't easily forget the absolutely devastating bushfires that were burning Australia not too long ago. But at the same time, thousands of miles away, homes were being flooded and livelihoods being destroyed in East Africa. So what is it that's causing these two incredibly dramatic extreme weather events? Is it climate change or is it a weather event? Have you ever heard of the Indian Ocean Dipole? These higher than usual temperature differences between the two sides of the Indian Ocean is referred to by meteorologists as the Indian Ocean Dipole, which is often referred to as the Indian Nino. Wetter west and drier east. I'll try my best to explain this phenomenon to you as simply as possible. One, to try not to bore you, but two, to try not to confuse myself. The temperature differences between the eastern and the western Indian Ocean are always oscillating, going through phases referred to as positive, negative and neutral. This year's positive phase meant that we were seeing warmer temperatures in the western region and drier in the eastern, wetter west, drier east. But this year's positive phase was one of the strongest that we've seen in the last six decades. In fact, it was one of the strongest on record. A negative dipole would bring about the opposite conditions, warmer water and greater precipitation in the eastern Indian Ocean and cooler and drier conditions in the west. Rainfall was about 300% higher than average when it hit eastern Africa, killing up to 300 people and affecting 2.8 million people further. So if this is a natural system, do we have to worry about climate change? Well, of course we do. This is the very worry that we have with climate change. Throughout the whole of Earth's history, there are so many natural biogeochemical and weather systems that take place, including this one, El Nino, interglacials, glacials. But because of anthropogenic stress, we expect to see these cycles finding their extremes, like we've seen this year with the Indian Dipole. The shock and heartache that we felt around the world as we watched Australia burn and Africa drown is something that we might just have to get used to. A study published in 2014 stated that these positive extreme dipole events should only really be happening every 17 years. However, due to climate change, we might expect to see them even more extreme and every six years. Now, whilst we were in Kenya, one of my personal highlights was when we visited a school. And when asked what the children thought about trees and what they provided, the children answered the rain. Now, if you ask me what I associate with trees and what they provide, I would say oxygen, which I think perfectly demonstrates just how integral weather conditions are to these people's lives, livelihood, culture, and general well-being. Climate change has the potential of devastating impacts around the globe if we do not halt it in its tracks now. 
This includes escalating conflicts, influencing food insecurity and destructive extreme weather events like we've seen already this year. Which is why it is so critically important that we unite as one people to tackle it, not just between countries but across generations. The African Youth Initiative on Climate Change is a network that brings together youth organisations and movements working on climate change and sustainable development, working from the grassroots to international levels. The African Youth Initiative on Climate Change Conference in 2010 led to the birth of the Kenya Youth Climate Network, which brings together all young organisations, student groups, individuals and community youth groups committed to working on climate change. Advocating for climate change policy in Kenya, behaviour change, social networks, green youth entrepreneurship, town hall conferences, action forums and operating under the slogan of you have a resource in you, which is what I'd like to finish this week's Tune In Tuesday on. There is so much we can learn from this group of youth activists and advocates for climate change. We all have a power as an individual to create individual action, which as one makes global change. You have a resource in you. So the rain is coming, the hail is coming, so I have to leave the Tune In Tuesday there. But thank you so much for watching this week's Tune In Tuesday and I'll see you next week for next week's episode.